Actually, my network is today struggling yeah, somehow. Yeah, it looks like uh, yeah. one now more it's on. Yes. Now it's on. Yes. yes now it's on. Um, uh, it's a greatest opportunity to introduce Dr. Anirudh Berman today. He is our esteemed speaker for today's webinar in this particular web platform for dialogue webinar series in the month of September. And it's a greatest opportunity to hear Dr. Berman for the second time because he was speaker in the previous uh, webinar series also with web platform for dialogue. Web platform for dialogue has been created in this particular pandemic uh, scenario where we actually lost our all connectivity with the academia. But let's be united and let's utilize this particular pandemic with a new normalcy, what we call it nowadays. So he is the greatest person and a finest scholar in the field of English. He is a accomplished uh, academician with rich experience in research, administration, training and development, relationship management, consulting in the distinguished career spanning around 40 years. Presently, he is designated as associate professor in Department of English, BA section, University, BT and Evening College, Coach Bihar. So I welcome you, sir, for today's uh, webinar series. And let's start your presentation in front of our audience. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Swati, for your introduction. Uh, good evening to all whoever is here. Good evening, Mudiji. You are the, one of the first participants every time I see. Lovely to see you. And a lot of my trainees are out here today. That's great. So I'll start by presenting the PPT straight away. Only if you know at times it takes a lot of time. Just give me a second or so. I'll be basically talking about Chirapunji where I have been brought up. New laptop. It takes time. Yeah. Now oh, let's see if we can do it. Yeah. Can you see my slide? Is the slide visible? It's coming, sir. Yes, it's coming. Yeah. Uh, the wettest. Sometimes it's taking. Yes, it's now on. Yeah. Is the wettest place on the earth, Chirapunji, where I have been brought up. I've been very lucky to be there for most of my youth and childhood days. I'll be talking about Chirapunji myths, myths and beliefs. Everything is working. Yeah. This is uh, the map of India. This is a map of India. And you see, it was a northeastern part. It's a small state called Meghalaya, this green area. If you can see the arrow out there. Because a lot of people are not sure where this place is really. And this is. See, this red portion in this uh, map is Meghalaya. This is Meghalaya. And mainly I will be talking about this small place called Chirapunji in East Khasi Hills district. Now, there are very interesting things. In the first place, Meghalaya is a part of the Deccan pattern. Deccan, the South Indian plateau, the Deccan plateau, see, because of the continental drift, the platonic theory, 
the Deccan Plateau has been putting a pressure towards the northeast, and suddenly this small portion came out. And this force is continuing. That's why we have so much of earthquakes towards the north of Bengal, Assam, and towards all of the northeast. And they say like this region will come up once beneath the Himalayas and emerge towards the north of Himalayas. So that that force is working continuously. The Deccan Plateau pressure. Now see, there is what more. One or two more very interesting things. The, the people people of the Northeast, they are of the Austric origin. They are basically from Kampuchea, Vietnam, that area. And the language so there is an error here. And their language is Mont Khmer. So nowhere in the Northeast you'll find this any of these three combinations. Meghala is a part of the Deccan Plateau, is not a part of the Northeastern region. The Khasis belong to the Austric origin, and they speak a language which belongs to the family Mont Khmer. What you hear in Kampuchea, Vietnam, and all those places, they're totally different. Their dress, their culture, their uh, uh, physique, their facial expression, everything is different. As I said, I will talk about myths, myths, and beliefs. The first myth. Now, people have a feeling, or people say mostly, even experts say, that rainfall decreased in uh, Chirapunji because of the fact that trees have been cut down mercilessly. Now, I take my stand slightly differently. Now, Chirakunji, very interestingly, suppose if you cut down the trees in a place, rainfall will decrease in a place which is lower than this place. It should not affect in that place itself. Suppose you cut down trees in Shillong, there will be less rainfall in Chirapunji, the rain shadow area. If you cut down trees in Chirapunji, it's going to affect maybe Bangladesh or the lower regions of uh, India, that side, which has not happened. Secondly, my contention is there is a system of sacred forests. Sacred forests, say people there do not cut trees mercilessly. Some forests are preserved. They do have to cut trees because of coal and other things. But that is very limited. They go once a week or once a month. A date is fixed. A day is fixed when they go and cut trees. Is not the way people think. Now suppose, let's look at this picture. Now oh, this, this I'm going to come to this little later. Now see, look at the top soil. If you look at the top soil, see how much of soil is there? How much of soil? And mostly this is limestone out here. Look at the look at the erosion that is taking place. Now, so this is a point. I have taken this photograph on purpose. 
This is the midpoint between Shillong and Chirapunji. As you turn left, you go towards Dauki, the Tamil border, Bangladesh border. That you see that uh, car coming from the left. And if you go straight, you go towards Chirapunji. Now you could look at the hills right from here. The previous one I showed was on this part. It was a Shillong site. Now this place called Untangar. From Untangar, you see, if you look at the hills out here, so these are all bare hills. And all through the subdivision, all through the subdivision, you'll find this picture. Hills are bare. Now, suppose if even if I have to agree that trees have been cut down, then the roots should have been there. Or even if they had uprooted them totally, the holes should have been there. It is just not possible that people have cut down trees all through the subdivision. It's just not possible. And there's one more thing. If you look at the if you look at the limestones, the presence of limestones has an effect. You cannot have tall trees out here. And then there is one more question. I found out from the conservator forests once that where there is a rainfall about 1000 inches or so, the seeds cannot germinate. This kind of flooding situation. As the seeds cannot germinate, we cannot have trees. And because we cannot have trees, we, they can't hold the topsoil. And if they can't hold the topsoil, again, we cannot have trees. This is a vicious circle. So this is a huge problem. It's not because of cutting down of trees. Something else is there. In a lot of my seminars earlier, I had talked of this and people have agreed to this. And a lot of other people know, people from geography also, they know this. And this is not easy. This is not cutting down trees. It is elsewhere. So you see here, the Sora division starts or ends. Sora is Chirapunji. Chirapunji is the present is the official name also. So S O H R A. And we used to locate it. We call Sora even earlier. So is fruit. So is fruit and rice to carry. So there are a lot of fruits to get. You get a lot of lot of uh, uh, jackfruits. You get a lot of uh, um, uh, oranges. You get a lot of bananas. You get a lot of uh, you know. You get a lot of um, honey. So if you do not have trees, how can you have these oranges? If you don't have tall trees, how can you have these jackfruits? They are there. They are there. But the issue is something else. Now, let's come to this. This is very interesting. I found out uh, last year the present geological age, present geological age, age is known as the Meghalayan age. Comes from the word Meghalaya. Now, it runs from 4,200 years till the present. So it started some 2000 years before uh, the BC, we call it, before the common era, before the birth of Christ, before common era, till it's continuing. And what they found out is, you know, there are two very important caves. And one cave I'll be showing you a little later, there's one more cave. So the Momulu cave, where the cement factory is there, we had never ventured there in our youth. We were always told like this is the deepest, this is the longest cave, and there are a lot of you know diversions. You can go, you can lose your uh, you know life there. You may not come back. So people have studied that, and this is not for uh, this is not for gaming. 
this this uh, cave is just for research work only. The people from Canada came and they studied, and they found out from this cave called Krem Mamlu Cave. Krem means cave. They found the these are longest and deepest deepest caves. One of them, uh, one of the longest and deepest caves in India. I've already said. They have taken some, you know, parts of these stalactites and stalagmites, and they've studied and found out that this gives a impression that of that old. Uh, you know, floods and the drought, which affected last two centuries earlier. This is a very old, very old, uh, you know, signs are there. So they've studied this and, um, well, I don't understand much of this. Uh, this is a part of the Holocene, Holocene epoch or Holocene series of which Meghalayan stage of the Meghalayan age is the uppermost and the latest and is some 4200 years old now. You see the others, other others are there below. I'm not going to discuss, I'm not a student of geology really. If someone is interested, can study this. It's very interesting. I've already talked of this rainfall. There is another very important bit. No, there is a story of snake worship. You find young boys and girls missing at times. Now, the story goes like this. In a, a village near Chirapunji, when the villagers used to go out for work, they had to cross a kind of a bridge or a culvert. Now, whenever they passed that culvert, the last person was always missing. So they have been watching this and they were confused, like what's happening? Then to their surprise and shock, they found out at the end of the bridge, there was a big hole where there was a snake which used to suck the last person inside and eat it, kind of a python or whatever. These days we can even talk of maybe anaconda, but then I don't. Now, they sat in a meeting. Now, how to resolve this? Because they had to cross that bridge. Every time they went out. So, in that meeting again, one interesting thing happened was there was an European and a Bengali, uh, most probably a person from Silet, and outsiders they are known as Dakar, D K H A R, Dakar. So, Dakar was also there. And this gentleman, this Bengali gentleman could be of uh, silent origin. He gave uh, the idea that let's make a pig out of iron, make it red hot, and we'll you know drag it at the end of the uh, group. So possibly. That snake will, you know, suck that pig and die. So they ultimately they agreed to this uh, theory. They moved out very careful, and the last man was holding the pig. So, as thought, the snake did suck in the pick, the red hot pick, and it was simply the inside of the snake was really burnt inside and 
it died. And people were really happy. They were very joyous that the snake has died. So in the evening, they met together. They cut the snake into several pieces. Every household was given one piece. Even that European and that, uh, this uh, Bengali gentleman was also given, but they refused. Now, all the families, barring one, cooked the meat and they ate, ate happily. One lady, one old lady, whose um, son was away in Shillong, waited that night, waited for her son to come back so that they could eat together the next day. Now, the lady dreamt at night that the snake came in her dreams and the snake said, you are a very good person, you have not eaten me, so if you don't eat me, I'm going to make you, if you, if you are going to worship me, I'm going to make you rich. So the lady waited for her son to come and when the son came, they discussed this over and they finalized, yes, let's give it a try. So they didn't eat the meat, they started worshipping the snake. These people are known as nonchalants. No show knows. Now, this practice started that they had to take the blood of a Khasi boy or a girl. Others had to eat him, so their blood wouldn't help. So, a child is always missing. They put two, you know, uh, sharp bamboo sticks inside their nose, blood comes out, and they say that as they start worshipping, the snake comes and drinks that blood. Now, this practice started continuing. Now, people came to know who are the people who are doing it, but they would not touch them normally. They were made outcast. No one would marry with them. Only if they were caught in action, they will not be given to the police or anyone. They will simply be to death. And the story goes that these people did not die without giving their mantra, handing over their mantra to the next generation or someone else who will continue this. Now there was a time when uh, it was found that people are not getting khasi blood. So the story slightly changed. Even the mixed blood will do. Then others would do. So even now today we find at times children are missing and killed. And even Elderly persons are at times killed. We really don't know for what reason. And there are ways, they say like they will take a small portion of your clothes or dress, they cut, a, cut something, they will take it away. That also helps, even if they are unable to catch you. And slowly you will shrink, you will be dehydrated, blood will be dried up and you will die. Similarly, there is another story that if you can give poison to a person and the person dies, you become rich. So people there take a lot of, you know, betel nut, betel leaf and betel nut. Now, through the betel leaf, 
it is said they give the poison. Now it is said because it is a very common practice. People uh, use a lot of betel nut out there. If you keep it in your hand and if your hand starts, you know, getting moist, that means there is a um, poison. Normally, you are not supposed to say no when someone offers you a betel nut, a betel leaf and nut. Now, but people die at times. We really do promote this. This is no kalikai false. This is not the best of photographs. Uh, the previous photographs, I really don't have. Uh, this is a very new photograph last uh, six years back when I visited there. I had taken this photograph. You've seen more, more water out there. It's kind of a, a shape of an S is to get as the water reaches towards the bottom. It's almost, you know, uh, coming out as, uh, as if uh, foams are coming out. Now, this is known as no Kalikai Falls. This is supposed to be the highest in uh, India and fourth highest in Asia. Now, the story goes like this. There was a lady called Kalikai. Ka is a female gender marker. And U is a male gender marker. We see like Sri and Srimati. The Ka is Srimati. And who is a Sri? So Likai. Now her she, because ladies, women go out for work normally out there. Men uh, stay at home. She went out for work, and when she came back, she was you know she started calling for his son, and he didn't respond. This. Uh, her husband, who was at home, had cooked some food for her and gave it to her. When, when eating that food, she found the meat, she found a finger, human finger. Then she realized, yes, this is maybe my son has been killed. Then she realized, yes, her husband is a long to know. He's a snake, snake worshiper. He Rushed out of the home and she jumped from this waterfalls. And that is how it's known as in Khasi, Shard Nukalikai. Shard is a K S H A D. Shard is a false. And somehow we call it Nukalikai. I really don't know that what no really means. Some say it's water, I don't know where it comes from, but it is uh, normally it's said Nukalikai. But uh, uh, person of Khasi or you say Shad Nokalikai. So there is a such story. Now, near this Nokalikai Falls, if you go down, there is a place called Latkin Sio. And this is not the case, this is a, uh, not the right one. Umonoi village, near Umonoi village, you get a living root bridge. This root bridge of uh, elsewhere actually. Now this is that root bridge. If you just uh, walk down some three thousand steps or so, very steep, very risky. And at Umnoi village, you will get this living root bridge. It's still growing. Its life is not dead, and people cross from one place to another. There's another one. It's a double decker root bridge. It's in Tirna village, and this is also a living root bridge. These are wonderful sites. You can see out there. As I said, I'm talking about mists. Yes, it's full of fog, it uh, rains a lot. And there's one more thing uh, I'd like to share here. Uh, you might have heard of a place called Mohsinra. Uh, let me just try and show you that place uh, when I was talking of five left. Ah. If this is Chirapunji, this is Mosinra, where for some time rainfall was highest in the world. Now, see, the aerial distance between these two places is 
just six kilometers. Just like if the monsoon air was low, then it would rain most of If the monsoon air was higher, it rained in Germany. That was the only difference. And for some time, it went to Fiji Islands. Within this five, six kilometers, there could not be such a huge difference. Really. And now just come back to Chirabuji. Yes. Now, see, this is another thing. Look at the spelling. This is called PEP. A P E P. It's basically a tombstone. Now, Parsis, they have their indigenous religion. They're not Hindus, they're not Christians, they have their indigenous Saint Kasi religion. And by and large, a lot of people are now Christians, that's a, another issue. But at least 40% will be uh, still Saint Kasi. Now, they used to cremate their dead. They will not bury them. And cremation, the normally what we find is we take them to a burning pile and everyone sees. But here, that burning pile would not be seen from outside. It's covered throughout by clothes. And that ash is put in these pips. So you see one, two, three, and four uh, stone slabs, and the top one more. And inside you find um, earthen pot where the ashes are there. The, the same one I'm showing from a different angle. Inside that, see, I just, uh, you know, pushed in my lens inside one of these. See, this is what I had seen. These were hundreds of years old, but they're still there. That's the beauty. There are more preps. This is in Upper Chirapunji, but these are dying out. I mean, no one is looking after them. No one is, you know, taking care of these. They'll be lost after some time. The place where they used to stay earlier, there are a lot of them at the side of the road, but nothing is there anymore. All are gone. See, these are not being taken care of. So there's a kind of barricade out here, but it's not helping. They'll be lost after some time. How long will these stones stay like this? So this is one more uh, a place. Uh, I think this photograph was taken in 14, and this one I will show where I was uh, taken in 16 or something. This is the place, see, there are some steps here. We could go up and sit here. I, if I find out old photographs, and some of the old photographs are there. And there is a post up here. This is also another pebble, another tombstone. Very near to where we lived in the quarters. Look at the condition now here. It's in a real bad shape. It's in real bad shape. No one is looking after. Now, very interesting. That post on the top, there's some writing out there. I have been only be able to and find out the meaning of last two words myself. The first word I asked a lot of my Khasi friends, but no one could give me the meaning of this. We could really decipher what it means. Next two is Priu Prithay. Priu means human beings. Prithay is earth. Could be something that in the memory of the people of the earth, 
some similar thing could have been written. U B R I E W and Pritheg P Y R T H E I. These two I can decipher. The first one I'm not sure. What is there? Could be someone's name or could be something else. So maybe in the memory of the people of the earth, uh, someone's uh, ashes or uh, ashes of a lot of people are there. This is another interesting thing. In Chirapunji, kings are there. Kings are known as CMs. S Y I E M. If you have read about Meghalaya, if you have read about uh, Chirapunji and other places or castles, you know it's a matriarchal society, which I'm opposed to. It is not matriarchal, it is matrilineal. Women do not hold the absolute power. Women, only that surname is taken from the women. Even everything is being controlled by men. So we have the kings, we don't have the queens. They have a they have a they have a parliament, a general parliament and parliament for women. Uh, that women's parliament never meets. And general parliament par parliament, all the men are there. The priests are all men. Ministers are all men. Now, so this is another pep of the kings. Now, the king, the CM, once the CM dies, it was a custom to feed all the people of the village. Whenever a single person is outside, that body is stored. That body is preserved somewhere. And in the meantime, maybe two or three more kings may have died, and all the you know bodies have, are being stored. And if there was a chance of feeding all people, then only uh, they would cremate them because they have been able to feed everyone. So these caps, there are lots of lots of. Uh, Lots of uh, ashes of uh, kings are there. So this is one. See, look at the shape. See, this is on a stream. This is on a stream, and slowly things will be uh, slowly. Slowly. Maybe this will be eroded and uh, um, this will be lost for us. So no, no one is uh, taking care. See, through this stream runs this. This is one web and the two are side by side. Now, see, on one of them, names of the kings have been engraved. It's sacred to the memory of. Who Roba Singh, who I said is a male gender marker as Sri TM of Chera State, who died on 30th November 1918. Now, see, another date is given 1926 or something, Chera 22, 3926, I think uh, that is where uh, he was cremated. It is when. One more is, see, Uram Singh, 1875. This one was 1918, 1875. And later on, 1908, he was created. There's another one, Shuba Singh. Now, see, if you look at the scripts very closely, towards the bottom, you find a script similar to Bengali. Now, 
see originally when the british king they gave this bengali script to the khasis and when it was found out that khasis were became very clever very intelligent slowly uh, this was removed and roman script was imposed so that there was a division now i have a feeling i really don't know um this also could be that nagari script of silhet that is died out now this is a separate script uh, in silhet nagari silhet in nagari this could be that i really can't read most of it i really don't know one more interesting thing i want to share with you Now we have heard of Stonehenge in England. And here I find a Stonehenge. Now it's in uh, is a bad shape. Now in a Stonehenge, you get twelve such pillars, twelve such posts. Maybe a Stonehenge. People are not sure why a Stonehenge was there. Uh, maybe it's um, uh, a kind of sundial kind of thing. Now all the twelve are not standing. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think uh, back side there is one ten. The two more are missing at the moment here. Now I think more have fallen. These are also pips, according to the class. These are also tombstones, and there are some sitting arrangements just in front. They are all lost now. Could be they used to meet. You see, there are some seating arrangements. Now here I get a three, four, five, six, seven, and I get here the same one here. See, all those slabs have fallen down. Here, how many? How many do I see? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, eleven, twelve. I see twelve out here. So it is circular vision. So I had to talk with. Uh, Mister, who was in charge of this earlier, I talked with a lot of people there, but no one seems to be very interested. These needs to be preserved. No one is looking after them. See, the buildings are coming up by the side. Now, this is another thing you'll find is a European graveyard. I'll show you one more. Uh, this is another European graveyard. Uh, they are in Russia. Could be. See, what is the difference? Could be this could be of people who were of lower ranks. Maybe they could not pay so much for their um, uh, tombstones, and here these people maybe they could pay. I would have, I could have, should have shown you one more. There is a David Scott's monument, but now all the pictures are lost. It's a whole problem. Uh, David Scott was commissioner of that part. Uh, he died. His tombstone is there. Uh, let's see if I can go to the chrome and then if I can show you later. Uh, he was the one who was responsible for capturing their very beloved king Uthirat Singh. He is the only person who fought, and ultimately he was caught, and he was sent to Dhaka. He died in Dhaka jail. And uh, David Scott, he died in Chirapunji. Now, near those pets, whenever when we were young, as a school child, we say a giant wheel. They do possibly, you know, for carrying water. So that is not there anymore, because initially the British. Tried Chirapunji as the capital of Assam. Then they found no, it's too much of rain, and for six months they cannot work. So they shifted it to Chilong later on. So those things were simply given up. You see, a lot of these arch bridges, very old ones, very old ones. The center one is the most important thing. If you take out the center part, this uh, bridge will collapse. No cement, no nothing. Very uh, wonderful. Lot of them, I find. Uh, just like as I am still in Chirapunji, I think I should show you 
this is one falls waterfalls called krum krum waterfalls plus uh, if you would like to pay a visit you can see this uh, excuse uh, deepamala yeah. i request not to present deepamala i request not to present anirudh sir you yeah. just start presenting yeah it is still there it is still there can i repeat i have to get out and no 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 deepamala please don't present stop presenting Deepmala, I request stop presenting. Thank you. Yes, sir. Please present. Is it, is it visible, minus? No, because oh, it's I... yeah. No. You have to oh, start. This is the problem with. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a problem with the student. Yeah. They start present it now, but yes. Sorry for the interruption, sir. Oh. In time here. And to present, I was coming to post my cave. Give me a second because of the interruption. I was lost. Is it visible? Is it visible? Yes, sir. It's coming. Yes, sir. It's coming. Ah. Now this is called the movement. Pattern. Hello. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes. Now this is known as the most my case, a uh, most my false. It is also known these days as the seven sisters false. Uh, I think it's more, little more political, maybe, uh, because they were to take all the seven states of not this now of course eight states. I don't know what you call. I think there are seven streams. I am unable to cover here. In some of the old photographs, it's there. This uh, one I couldn't get. Uh, you see very narrow streams at the moment because at the moment when we went, it was not raining. So this uh, problem maybe because but then during the rainy days. You'll hear the roar. You'll hear the roar of water from a very long distance, from seven uh, streams. Now, whether we call it Mosmai Cave or the Seven Sisters Cave, is a wonderful sight overlooking Bangladesh. It was uh, my right here, and this is the. Most my cave, you know, Chirapunji has wonderful caves. I have been talked of the Momlu cave. This is most my cave. I can show you. There are wonderful caves even in Garo Hills. There is a there are the caves in Jowai. These are the longest caves in Asia, and the ones in Garo Hills are living caves. They say because the water runs through. And uh, this cave we have gone in number of times. It was right whenever we went, it was blocked. We couldn't go. And for the fear that like, if the road is blocked once, now of course a lot of people are there. And as you can see a light up there. It's very really, really artificial now, but it's safe. This is, see, look at the stalactites coming down uh, and stalactites which are going up. You can see because it's all lighted now, you can easily see. It's a beautiful sight. Inside. Look at this. It's a wonderful thing you can see inside. It is watery. You could go out this way. On the right, it's not possible. It's blocked. This way, we could come out. Look at these stalactites. Wonderful. Wonderful, you know, features. Uh, this is a this is a village down this most my cave. Was my force. 
Now, I had asked this question. How come people went that far down? I had a camera. I'm sorry, that camera is uh, uh, not in a good condition now. Uh, it's a lens of 1000x zoom. Uh, I could get this picture. Someone said it's possible that those days all the rowdy elements, all the you know, criminals, is to be sent down so that they cannot come up and create problem for the people up in the villages. So they they stayed there. Maybe true. I don't know. Look at the, look at the typical typical shape of the you know uh, roof. That's normally what we used to observe there. Uh, this is another false as you go. Towards Chirapuji, Okhava Falls. Very close, I taken from the source. What are the Okhava Falls? And one more thing I wanted to show you. This is very interesting. You know, out here, those uh, tombstones of the kings are there, very close by. And we used to go up there. There was a government dispensary up there. We used to go up this way. Now, these slant posts are very interesting. They are there for hundreds of years. My connection is last 63, 62, 63 years. It was there. It was much, much there, much, much, much before. But these are standing in the street. They are still there. I don't know what, what mechanism, what architecture. So this is one photograph I have taken uh, from with that 100x, 1000x zoom from Chirapunji. This is a place called Chato in Bangladesh. It's the best view I could get. Uh, there's no problem. I mean, uh, some people thought my hand must have shaken, but it's, not, it's nothing such. Uh, this is a little better than I could see with my bare eyes. Chato uh, is around maybe 30. To 40 kilometers aerial distance and uh, by road maybe is 45 to 60 kilometers there it's a wonderful view in Jigo. so this is all i can share about terapunji at the moment uh, i don't have a few more photographs i've uh, very unluckily a lot of things i mean you can't even store in the, the drive anymore so i'll try and save something in the google drive Maybe in future stuff. And there are lots and lots of ah, this is the Kasi dress, typical Kasi dress you did in the house. My sister and my son out there. The men's dress and the women's dress. Women may have very heavy ornaments and heavy you know, headgear. And one wonderful sight I had got once in the evening. Because it's always mostly it's, uh, clouded. Thank you. That's all I've got to show uh, wow. at the moment. A wonderful <laughs> visit to Cherapunji. Thank you so much with your lens, with your uh, explanation. Actually, I, I was traveling with you. So thank you so much, first of all, from my personal uh, gratitude. And I uh, actually visualize the myth and the mist and the journey you have gone through with this. So it's a wonderful explanation from your side. I think we have a, a thank you. We have wonderful uh, feedback from the student, particularly. I think most of your students. Oh, yeah, no problem. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so uh, from Shushuta Sri Chattopadha, the tombstones, most. Uh, more than 100 years old, uh, then the custom and the site should be heritage site. They should be protected as yeah. cultural heritage. Uh, is there any government uh, interpretation or any, any initiative taken by the government to protect them? No, nothing, Sutosri, nothing. Because uh, I had tried, I would talk to one of the ministers, I tried to a lot of people. People are simply not very callous about this. These are going to be lost very soon. So that's why I took it up here. Maybe if you could talk to 
the archaeology department or someone who can help. Because this also needs some carbon dating. Because things are so old, how old we don't know. The people had come over from uh, Kampuchea, Vietnam, coming over here and settling and doing so many things. And so unless we have some carbon dating, some history of what people have written something, but this part is not covered at all. How do we get the concept of stone out there? England, we know in the very early years of England, it was there some millions of years back. But it is there, it is very recent. Even that is also losing. Shikdusri, thank you so much for pointing out this because this particular session will definitely be a, a remarkable session. And I think in this way, with this web platform for dialogue is the forum to share uh, the views. And it should be, it should be the uh, protected by the government. And uh, I have some connection with the government in the, uh, in the reformation section. So definitely uh, Abira Bhattacharya, uh, she will definitely do something with this. So this session will be in the YouTube. So people can actually know about it and it should be restored and it should be protected as a cultural heritage. And this is the starting point where we can actually not to only uh, look at policy, but act policy, you know, so it's not only just to uh, reaction, but some action should be there. So thank you so much, Dr. Berman, for this wonderful session and with your photographs and everything with the visual effect, we can actually visualize the scenario, what is been there and how much enriched the Northeast is actually. We don't know, you know, so many facts that we don't know and so many myths have been there that the indigenous people are very dangerous and, uh, you know, they could do anything, they would be harmful. You know, lots oh. of lots oh. of myths have been there, and uh, they could do kala jadus and you know some dark yeah. inside. <laughs> so, I don't know here. I don't know here. <laughs> actually, <laughs> thank you so much for putting some light and torch with this <laughs> aspect also. So I'm uh, I'm really open the floor to the audience, and if you have any observation, if you would like to ask something to Dr. Brahman, you can ask. Sir, uh, sir, I would like to ask you, what about the coal mines when I visited in 2014? A lot of areas on the way uh, towards Cherapunji, the caves that you were showing, uh, there were coal mines dug over there. And yeah, yeah. Uh, it's destroying the environment, the beautiful green view over there, I guess. So what is that exactly? I couldn't, it, is, it was quite far from the roadway. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, but uh, what is that exactly? And uh, is it destroying the nature over there? Uh, there, are, there are there are some coal mines yes there are so, some coal mines but then see this is these are not the coal mines we get in Bihar or Jharkhand and all those places these are um, you know very detrimental to the environment so most of these are banned now they cut from the sites and it can be any hazardous anytime so is it being worked by the government or government is still promoting that government is not promoting this I think they are mostly they are banned now. So we used to get some peat coal, uh, some coal from there, because charcoal is there, but yes, this is a separate coal, peat coal or something we get from there, but uh, that is very difficult now. Dwai side there are some uh, you know, mines in uh, Jointe Hills, but this side, Cherpun side, all these are banned now. And the church and uh, the church and uh, the yards, the graveyards that you had shown, Yes, it was not protected. It was not visited by. It was barren, totally barren. No, uh, no protection. No, uh, no historical site. Like nothing was there. It was totally barren. No, no. Till far you couldn't see see a single uh, person site over there. Yeah. Why is that so? Like uh, people, people are very callous about this. I'm sorry to have lived with the people there. Very lovable people. They're very simple folk. They are. They don't realize the importance of this. But the children are quite, But still, I will say that the government is doing a lot. I cannot deny with that. 
Ramkrishnan yeah. Mission School, where uh, where I visited, it was much more developed my uh, more than my yes. Ambani School. Like uh, yes. the uh, the national anthem was going on early in the morning. They have maintained a very, very nice science library over there. Yeah. Like it was uh, both the libraries over there were very well maintained. The children were yeah. very well dressed up there uh, at this position. Even the people over there are still awake. And why are they not doing anything for Charapunji like for the government? I'm sure this mission, uh, Ramkish mission, has been doing something about that. But then why isn't it developing that particular area? Though it's far from Shillong, but still there are scopes. Chirapuji, I'm a student of this Ramkish mission also. And uh, my dad was uh, then, uh, when we were there, my dad was the English teacher. And he used to look after the library. Because I had, yeah. I had uh, you know, worked in that library unofficially with my dad. But, see, yeah. there is... The trouble with Ramakrishna mission is, I'm sorry, I mean, I have to, I have to criticize also there. There is no snowballing effect in administration. So one person comes as secretary, he disapproves of what has been done earlier and starts anew. In, in early, mid 60s or late 60s, there were some 5,000 books in the library. And even I remember when I did my master's, uh, I got some 21 books from that library, English literature. Because there was one uh, secretary, Morris Kudrabhadalanda Mohan, from uh, Tamil Nadu. He had done all this. Now suddenly, little later we found, lots and lots of books were simply sold away. Just like papers. Then we lost wonderful books. They're not there anymore. I'm sure so, I saw them. I saw many books over there. I saw the science library, the uh, museum over there was wonderfully yes. maintained. Yes. We have uh, recorded our views also over there. But uh, the thing is that still uh, after that also I didn't see Charabunji totally it was not that uh, well uh, like it could have been developed but yeah. it was yes. it wasn't. I think, I think, I think um, you know it, it's similar with other bureaucracy and administrative uh, as uh, yes. Kajol is saying, in that in that museum, uh, I knew it earlier. Um, I found out uh, newspaper cutting yes, about it was railways, railways yes. in Kirapunji. Railways yes. in Kirapunji. Yes. There are yes. remnants. There are remnants found, but they are small bit better. Unfortunately, my old disc got corrupted. Otherwise, I would have shared few of the pictures. It was yeah. like uh, we can hear about thousand pictures of that uh, Chera Punji in Shillong itself. So yeah, it, yeah. yeah like lovely views. The caves you are talking about, I slipped very badly over there. So I, I got reminded when you showed me. <laughs> when actually that cave has an it has an entrance, and above that you have one small this much place where you have to enter inside. Just climbing yeah. the stairs. Yeah. So it's a very very little place where a human cannot go. But still, we went inside <laughs> to take pictures. And the water was tripling from up. I was scared about yes. my digital yes. camera. Yeah. I was scared. Then I went over there and took the pictures. And then lost those because of my hard disk got corrupted. And uh, otherwise, that I slipped very bad. Because for my children, I was I was collecting those for my children in Ambani school. And uh, I thought I'll show it to my children. I showed them also. But the thing is that uh, my uh, primary as a primary sources, I went to I wanted to bring out them uh, these things of uh, northeast to, to uh, Gujarat. So that is why I tried my best and uh, surveyed a lot. And what you were saying, it reminded me of fresh of everything. Like <laughs> what I observed. Yeah, thank you so much. Actually, lack of time. Otherwise, I could have shown you something about Ramakrishna Mishra also. I have got the photographs here only. But I, was the time. I was expecting that because that was a school which uh, shows that there are 199.9% chances where this can be developed. But yeah, because of yeah. coal mines, coal mines is destroying the whole area and that uh, region that you showed with uh, that uh, seven seven uh, rivers flowing together, yeah. sisters, that was also a beautiful site where we stopped and we had, then there were few jungles also inside, we showed the tribal people over there, they used to live, but we could not find one tribal men. I tried to search one tribe, but I could not see any particular tribe of that locality over there. Uh -huh. I went so inside you, the yeah. jungle, are, are they Thank still you. inside the jungle? Uh, find any tribe over there? Inside? Thank you. Do you still find any tribe over there inside the jungle where 
near seven sisters there is a huge jungle over there where you cannot oh yes sir down the down that picture sir this you know, i i showed that picture okay there there are, are, oh, oh yeah, yeah there are people there there are people my, there my, uh, my camera uh, my net got disconnected for 15 oh. minutes so that i'll see in youtube I'll once again yeah please check. yes yeah lucky lucky i had got the shot that old camera three? Sir Shudo Sri uh, have some question regarding yeah. the the snake worship. Uh, uh, so uh, in one story about waterfall, uh, that the husband, a husband. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. 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 So is uh, there an indigenous religion or any mythological? It is belief? not religion. It's not a religion. It's just a belief of some people. It's just a belief that uh, snake worship goes on. But the reality is that people or boys and girls are killed. That reality is very much there. It's got nothing to do with any religion. It's just a belief. Thank you so much. That is a very, very important part in the last uh, presentation. That nothing is related with religion. Religion is a part. Belief and culture is another part. That we always try to overlap with religion, beliefs, and everything. We got confused. So thank you so much for pointing out this wonderful uh, explanation. We are almost at the end of the discussion. So I, uh, I am personally thank you so much, sir, Anirudh sir, and all the participants over here. Because initially, when we actually started the session, yeah. it was two to three participants. So we got very confused and you know not so much motivated. But with your presentation, with your uh, presence. We are very blessed that we have wonderful participants over here who patiently be with us and share your stories. Thank you so much, Dr. Kajal. Thank you, Dr. Arsad. And all of you, all of you. Thank you so much, students who have participated today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Take you. care. Thank Take you, care. Everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Good night. Good night.